In the winter of 2016, mutilated remains were found in the heart of Melbourne. The investigation that followed would uncover a trove of hidden treasures. The culprit, though, was never publicly held to account. I was contacted by a young man by the name of Chris, and he was interested in a particular work. A work published in 1789, written by Guillaume Antoine Olivier, who was a really significant figure in the history of French entomology. The person requesting the book was interested in seeing one particular beetle. It was a particular beetle he was doing as part of his um, PhD work. Neither of us had ever seen those particular books before, so we went up together to have a look. The first thing I noticed is it had the, the book plate from the Comte de Castelnau. Comte de Castelnau left the most important donation the library had received. He collected quite a substantial collection of some of the key works on natural history. And so there are some really beautifully illustrated works um, about different types of insects and about fish from around the world. They're very valuable on the market, many of these books, and there are books that we couldn't uh, procure or, or purchase today. But they're also special because they show us the working library of a gentleman scholar in the 19th century. From our point of view, they are irreplaceable. I started to turn the pages and it was truly magnificent. And I suddenly came across a page that just had a hole in it. That was when, to our horror, we discovered these books were mutilated. This book has been mutilated. You know, it's distressing. I was mortified because it, it felt like under our watch. The role of being a rare book curator is to be just one link in the chain, passing it on to the next generation. And I went back to the shelf and as I worked my way through, all of the volumes of Beatles cut out. Who would do this? You know, who would do this to such a beautiful and, and rare book? Who indeed and why? Why target these books? The answers to these questions lay in the 1860s, when these books lived in a terrace house, which once stood right here in East Melbourne and belonged to the French Consul General, a gentleman scholar who was said to be the illegitimate son of a French king, or an English king, depending on the source of the rumor. He was a man who went by many names, but was known to his few associates in Melbourne as Le Comte de Cassanel, or simply the Count. Here's a man who belongs to a great and ancient noble family, is able initially to indulge his passions for scientific inquiry and travel with family money. Cassanel had led an expedition of four through the jungles and mountains of South America in which one man was murdered, another died, and he himself left riddled with disease he painstakingly acquired one of the largest entomology collections in Europe. And then, of course, after the 1848 revolution, uh, this family money seems to have been cut off and he starts looking for jobs. Well, he went into the consular service. He had various diplomatic postings around the world, everywhere from Brazil to Cape Town, Bangkok, and then here in Melbourne. At one point, while Casanel was here, it was the second largest city in the world behind London. Castelnau died in 1880, the very peak of Melbourne's growth. More than a decade before he died, Castelnau sold his beetle collection to the museum after arriving in Melbourne. Beetles are the most common life force in the world. One in every five named animals is a beetle, and that's what Castelnau decided to make a collection of. So he travelled, but he also swapped and traded and bought specimens of beetles from around the world. It's really interesting, the Castelnau collection. When you pull a drawer out, and there's about 40 drawers of it, and you scan your eye across the drawer, and it looks as though there are beetles throughout the whole drawer. It's only when you begin to look closer that you realise that in fact some of the specimens are quite flat. Castelnau, being a naturalist, he was looking for new species. So when Castelnau knew about a certain species of beetle, but he didn't have a specimen, he cut it out of books. And then he would paste it onto a piece of cardboard and then put it in the collection. And it looks just like the other specimens sitting beside them in that. And if anyone knew, of this link between books and beetles at the time, that knowledge was lost. That was until a recent chance conversation between librarians and curators about the curiosities of their respective Casanau collections. A few of our colleagues in the museum contacted us and they were interested to come down and look at some of the books um, donated by Castelnau. It was suddenly mentioned that it was quite odd because his beetle collection, some of the beetles were just made of paper, pinned in. And it was like a kind of 
light bulb moment where we suddenly realised that's where the missing bits had gone. The books and the specimens were separated into two different institutions and we never actually got together to find out that in fact they were linked and the holes in the books in the State Library were sitting in the museum collection here. So it was a wonderful, wonderful find and they added so much more to the whole interest and value of the collection. And so this, this collection from way back in 1880 that was separated will come together for the very first time nearly 140 years later and be able to be viewed by people in the exhibition at the State Library.